Hello everyone. Welcome to the Photography Live podcast series Photos and Stories. It's so good to see you everyone after a long time. Uh, as always, uh, me and Ruby Raj, a professional photojournalist based in Washington DC, have the privilege to invite legendary and successful professionals in the photography industry. 2020 was a very challenging year for us. Uh, but I hope you all started the new year with good health. This is the sixth episode of Photos and Stories, and I'm so excited to come back with a list of some more amazing photographers from all around the world who will be featuring in this show from now on with their incredible stories behind their award-winning pictures. So my purpose is to present behind-the-picture stories of the life and the journey of these amazing photographers. Today, in the sixth episode of Photos and Stories, it's a great honor to present internationally renowned Iranian documentary photographer, winner of World Press Photo Award, Pictures of the World, Fatima Bebudi. Please welcome Fatima Bebudi. Hi. Hello, Fatima. Hello, How are you? Andrew. I'm it's, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much to you too, because I know that it's it's been. Uh, I'm, I apologize to, to the to our uh, to our viewers because of a small delay. Because I know that we, we were having some uh, issues to connect internet. Uh, I know that you are in at at this moment. You are in Tehran, right? Fatima, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I think the, the internet uh, connection is a little bit disrupted at this moment. We have been trying it uh, to, to resolve it uh, for a long time. I think uh, we should be back very soon. Um, viewers, please forgive me and uh, give me some more time to come back. Uh, hopefully, Fatema will be connected very soon. Yeah. Thank you so much, viewers, for uh, for being here, for seeing these uh, photos and stories. I know that it has been a very, very challenging time for all of us. And um, I know that I also took a long break to come back with, with a new episode. But from this uh, time, from now on, uh, I can promise you that uh, I'll be bringing uh, some more amazing photographers from diverse background and from from diverse, um, from from different parts of the world, so uh, uh, I I wish that you all be connected and you know keep uh, watching uh, photos and stories and the the viewers who are uh, watching uh, this uh, podcast at this moment, uh, please share the the link of this podcast uh, to your uh, social media. Facebook, Instagram, or or Twitter, um, and that is highly appreciated. Um, our link is to is like my profile link, which is www.facebook.com slash Andrew Biraj and www.youtube.com uh, slash Andrew Biraj. So hopefully I'll be back uh, very soon with, with our uh, amazing guest today. Uh, we, uh, Fatima Bebodi, she's an Iranian photographer. She's connecting from Tehran, Iran at this moment. So I um, uh, apologize for a uh, small uh, interruption in, the, in our connection because Fatima is trying to connect with us uh, remotely from Tehran. Viewers, uh, in the meantime, I also want to share you that if you want to uh, see the previous episodes of Photos and Stories, you can always visit uh, my website, which is uh, www.andrew-biraj-photostories. And also you can uh, visit my Facebook page, which is uh, just slash Andrew Biraj, and you'll get all the amazing uh, previous episodes, um, which I have done with uh, some legendary photographers like Dave Burnett, Eli Reed, 
and also some successful photographers like Peter Benakmo, um, Daniel Berlach, and also Michael Cohen from uh, Australia. So viewers, uh, uh, I apologize again for the disruption. I and I appreciate that you are uh, hearing. Uh, you are you have already joined us and you are still with us. And Fatima is back. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> Hello again. Hi, I'm really, really sorry because, because this is Iran and we always, everything is filtered in Iran. You know, we have many problems. No problem at all. We are, I am, I personally, I'm very, very delighted to have you as a guest in my show. And I understand that the internet connection is not as good as, uh, like I, in, in my place. So, uh, I really appreciate that you uh, took this effort and your uh, for your time. So can we start, please? Yes, yes, sure. All right, sure. Uh, Hello? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, Fatima, I know that you are uh, you have been in Denmark uh, uh, and you just came back from Denmark. Uh, I know that you uh, already enrolled in um, Danish School of photojournalism you came back from there in the first week of January and then we have been you know back and forth to um to organize this podcast uh, but a little bit to for our viewers uh, can we go back a little bit like can can i ask you like how did you start photography and what inspired you to take photography okay uh i think uh this is a very long story uh because i didn't like photography first uh uh um this is very really strange uh when i was very younger i mean when i was 19 my father was an uh, art manager and i wanted to go to a school and he told me fatima you're talented and uh, i think uh, it's very good for you don't go to university and come to my uh center art center and uh, start to learn arts i think it's very uh, very good for you and i decided to study photography and but it was not very interesting for me but uh at that time uh i think it was about two years that i studied uh i saw a person that she was very strong extra she was a very strange person her name was leila and uh when i i mean printed one of my my black and black and white photographs uh she told me fatima i believe that you wanted to be great photographer because you I took the spirit of the tree and after that she died uh, do you know uh, sometimes we have no power for i mean for our lives i mean uh, everything is changed because i really like to be pianos pianist but the, the death of my best friend uh, made me to be photographer today that's why i decided to be great photographer one day because of my best friend so uh, i started professional photography in 2007 I worked with Iranian news agencies, several Iranian news agencies like ICNA, Fars, Meh News, Irna, I think most of the Iranian news agencies. And uh, yes, and I think uh, the first uh, my per professional events in international was in 2013. Uh, I, I was selected for the Jube Sword Masterclass WordPress photo for the first time. And uh, I think uh, this masterclass helped me to be seen and to believe myself, myself and my photography. And everything uh, happened after. Yes. And uh, Yes, Fatima. Uh, this is uh, this is really amazing. I, I I know I know that you um, you want, as as you told that you you wanted to be a pianist and your your background is is in art. Uh, I am more interested a little bit about your like you know you know in your childhood and the, and the and want to learn My like how, yeah like how how was it like you you grew up in Tehran and. And I know that uh, I, when I, I was, I, I have been going through your work for a long, long time, and I'm sure that our, our, our most of our viewers are like, you know, it's very familiar with the, your works too, because those are like highly celebrated all around the world. I saw in your statement that you uh, grew up uh, during the Iran-Iraq war. So uh, how was your childhood? Where did you, where did you grow up? Uh, uh, 
Um, uh, and how was it? How was it difficult or like, yes. uh, uh, yeah? Uh, uh, honestly, uh, I want to say for the first time that my childhood was very, very, very hard. I think it, it was like a tragedy. And I'm thinking that maybe in future, I, I really like to make my story. Um, but I always say just a, a, a about a little part of my childhood. And uh, that was very important part of my, uh, my, my life. That was very impressive. And that's why today I'm making projects about the effects of the war. Uh, do you know, uh, I was born during the Iran and Iraq war in 1985. And uh, I never, never, never forget that all of my childhood was uh, were spent in the name of the war. I always saw uh, the war in, inside of my home and others. I, I mean, uh, my grandfather, uh, he went to the war and he he ha he was he had many many uh, injured, uh, or my uncles or my best or uh, the best friends of my father. He he he. Uh, I mean, he was killed during the war and his body uh, went back after. I mean, five or ten years. I don't remember because I was very shy. But uh, I always uh, remember that everything uh, was about the war, I, you know, and uh, uh, all of my paintings, all of my, I, I mean, my games or everything, everything was about war. I mean, even, um, I mean, in uh, the movies that we always watch, or I always remember the voice of, I mean, uh, Sorry, my English is not good. And uh, I always heard everything. Uh, you know, that's why I never forget that. When I was, I mean, about seven or six years, I don't remember. I I never forget that for the first first time, I saw that uh, me and my father went, uh, we heard that uh, many bodies, I mean, Iranian soldiers, their, their bodies were found, and, were found and come back to Iran. And me and my father went to say hello to the bodies after many years. Uh, I mean, uh, it was the first time I saw that, uh, and it was always in the inside of my mind that uh, the war was finished. Why uh, Why uh, there is many body, and uh, why this issue is very important. It, it was always inside of my mind. And when uh, I was growing up, do you know, uh, we always living in the Middle East. I mean, we always heard many news. I mean, in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, Iraq, everywhere, that uh, there was always war, and we always uh, lived with the truth of the war, do you know. Or even uh, I always heard that the people uh, always talking about Saddam Hussein, what he did to Iranian people or the other people, I mean, in the, even in his country. And, you know, uh, I think the war is not going to finish for us, I mean, especially for Iranian people, because uh, I think this is very, very similar, very, very familiar for me. And that's why I decided to make a story about that. But before that, uh, I always saw that many projects, I mean, uh, European photographers always coming to me, to the Middle East. They always making a story that they are very amazing and I really like them. But I felt that something is missed uh, in their works. I mean, uh, something that I, I felt that I can show about that uh, because I always lived and grew up with, with, the, with, uh, with them uh, sometimes. Oh, sorry, sorry. And uh, that, that's why I decided to make the, the story, the projects about the effects of the war. I mean, uh, I started it first in Iran, and maybe uh, I can continue this idea in other countries. I have this idea. Yes, so. But certainly, uh, you don't have to be sorry. <laughs> you know, means English is not our primary language. So I really appreciate that you are taking this for. So, Fatima, that you have been uh, talking about your inspiration, and was there any specific moment that that inspired you to take up documentary photography? Because I know that you have been working as a news photographer initially, and then you, you know, you transformed into like more, more on your, the long term projects. So, was there any specific moments or uh, inspiration behind it?
I mean, uh, for the first time, I, I never forget that for the first time I saw a picture of Kevin Carter. Uh, I mean, maybe you saw that Kevin Carter, he's very famous. He took a shot uh, from a, ch a ch child in uh, in Africa. For the first time when I saw that, I was surprised. Wow, why this photo is really impressive. And I ha I had many questions about this uh, this photo. That's why I, I decided uh, to make a stories about that. I mean, uh, the story to be very strong, like Kevin Carter. And... Uh, Yes, sorry. And um, one, uh, it was about that. After that, uh, for the first time, I went to, to exhibition of Mr. Uh, Alfred Yagubzade. Do you know him? Yeah, sure, Hello. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm here. I'm just giving you the full screen. Hi. So. Yeah. 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 Please go on. Hi, Andrew. Yeah, I'm here. Yes, yes. So because please. I didn't please. see you. Yes, and uh, yes, yes. I mean, Kevin Carter was the first person who was very, uh, very impressive on my projects. And after that, I saw uh, a photo exhibition for, for from uh, I mean Alfred Yagouta, his Iranian French photographer, mm -hmm. and he made a story about Palestine, Palestine, and it was very, very strange, and uh, it was very impressive. And uh, one uh, one thing that is very important about my my projects is very big. when I started photography because I never had a very good master and I always learned everything with myself. And I really liked first I really liked uh, take photos of politician and it was always my dream. I mean, in the second uh, years of my, my professional work that I worked with Iranian news agency, it was a uh, Iranian election. Uh, it was the first time I saw something that changed my life and my photography too. Uh, I always liked take photos of the politician, uh, but after the election, there was a very big problem because many people believe that uh, the in Iran Iran's election uh, there was a little problem, and the Iranian people chose another person. Uh, I mean, Mir Hossein Mousavi, but uh, the the government, I mean, the regime of Iran, chose another person. It was Ahmadinejad, and uh, that's why. Uh, People come to the street. They had. They were very angry, and uh, I saw something that I had many questions to myself. Fatima, do you like take photos of politician, and or do you like take photos of people? Which one is very important for you? And uh, I asked this question, uh, and I saw that. I mean, I really like take photos of people. I mean, I changed myself, my mind. I tell. I found that. Uh, just people are very important, not politicians. Politicians are always playing with all of us. Uh, but uh, if I want to make a story that people, uh, I mean, to be very uh, impressive, uh, I should make a story just for people. That's why I changed my mind at, at that, that time. I, th I think it's about, it's about one, 11 or 12 years ago. I mean, in 2009. Year, uh, that's why I was the first of my professional my professional uh, photography. I changed my mind and I decided to be I mean documentary photographer. Uh, and after that, I started uh, to learn with myself slowly because I had no good master. I, I always tried my best to to learn with myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... But Tima, in this in this point, uh, I I really want to go straight to your photographs because I I want to show some of your award winning and very important uh, projects to to our viewers, and I uh, I hope that you'll be talking about about the project and the and the behind the scenes stories. Um, viewers, I, I, I'm uh, I apologize again because for the internet connection. Uh, the pictures might uh, be seen in a very smaller resolutions, and I hope that you bear with it. And um, yeah, uh, so I'm sharing this my screen, um, Fatima. Uh, just just let me know if you see my screen. Yes. All right. So. Uh, can we 
can we uh, start with the mother of patients project and you have been talking about yes, it uh, sure. briefly in the, so, um, primarily so can you go a little bit uh, yeah. uh, depth yes. yeah thank you yes uh do you know uh i say honestly because uh it's very important uh maybe why i made it this project uh the first reason that i had to to make a story uh it was about my pace i mean my childhood that uh, i always saw uh the war the inside of my home and uh after that i mean uh i always uh I mean, I told you about that, that me and my father want to say hello to Iranian bodies, Iranian yeah. soldiers' bodies. And uh, it was uh, like a question. And when I started photography, I mean, professional photography, it was about like that. I mean, I always took the photos of the ceremony that Iranian soldiers' bodies, after many, many years, find and come to Iran. I always uh, made many reportage for Iranian news agency about that. And uh, at that time, I saw mothers that they were looking for their last son bodies. And it was like a question to me why the mothers, uh, they never forget their, their sons after, I mean, 30 years, uh, why they never forget that. And and uh, I I found that uh, that other people, I mean, ordinary people, they don't know about those mothers. Uh, or even I found that people around the world, they don't know about the Iran and Iraq war, they have no information. So uh, the importance of the, these projects, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I, I I mean, I started this project for the Jubsort Master Class first. I didn't know that how much this project is very important. But uh, I saw uh, a person, her name was uh, Maggie Stieber. I don't know you you know her or no. She, she's uh, the first person she found me in uh, Facebook. And I talked with her about this project and she told me, Fatima, I believe that this project is very important. You should make it. So I started to, to work on this project slowly because I had no sponsor. I had uh, There was no support. And it yeah, was I'm very not hard to find this them, point, but and it was a, my first uh, life. Yeah, Maggie is a so, great inspiration sorry? for all of us, and uh, she herself is, is yeah, one yeah. legendary photographer from the United States, and she's like uh, greatest inspirations for all of us. Yep. She's a very, very nice person, and uh, I think she 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 believed me when I didn't believe myself. And uh, she told me, Fatima, this project is very important because we don't know about that. So I decided to make this project. I mean, I started this project in Jubsoar for just for Jubsoar, but I found that uh, when I saw, uh, I mean, professional masters in, I mean, in WordPress, I decided to continue that, uh, and I continue this uh, project for different. I mean, for many years, I, I think. Uh, this project took uh, about five five years and uh, slowly i worked on this project and could to be seen uh the, okay, I have a about, uh, the iran and iraq war. yeah your pictures so, sorry? Uh, in most of your pictures those are so intimate i see that you are in the middle of people's emotions in your you are so uh, involved in their life uh, I know that uh, as a photographer, it's not only about taking pictures, but also uh, like um, making uh, strong relationships and uh, and you know is going um, to to the to the lives of people. So, uh, can you please uh, talk about a little bit more about like how did you manage the access as, as well as uh, how did you feel by yourself uh, to work with these people? Uh, one thing I really like to say, because uh, first, uh, Iranian people are very warm people. They they are going to be friends together very, very soon. And this is very easy. And uh, another one is uh, my, I told you that my, my childhood was very really hard because I, I never had mother in my life. 
And when I did this project, it was about with my heart because I wanted to discover who is mother and uh, what is the love between mother and her child. It was like a question I wanted to discover this. Uh, this it was very important to me. And when I started this project, I didn't know how much is heavy and is very deep project because it was very, very hard. Every time I found a person and I went to their homes, I found many things that it was like a surprise and a shock to me. And after the project, I mean, when I go back, to, I went back to my home. After that, I cried so so much for this project because I couldn't believe that how could this, those people, uh, uh, they still have many pain or uh, suffer from the war. Uh, and nobody uh, see them. I do know it was like a uh, shock to me. Uh, and when I went to their homes and told them I come to take your photos, they they were very very kind to me because there they there was that there were never person who who wanted to say about their their sons, and they believed me and they were they were like a mother to me and they supported me, and I lived with the, with for many. Many days. I mean, every month. Uh, I mean, I Is had there no problem. Uh, you want to share the, the story with us? Is there any specific person? What? Is there any specific mo mother I, you want I, to share, share her story with us? Yes, yes. There is a mother. Yes. yes. Yes, there is a mother that she's uh, calling. Uh, I mean, with phone. Uh, I mean, I, I I had an interview before about that, that shot. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you see? Uh, a mother is calling with phone. Uh, it's in my project. Uh, this mother. I started mothers of patient projects uh, with that person. Can Phyllis come down? <laughs> yes. Uh, there was a mother that she told me, Fatima, I had many, many pain in my life. I'm really tired and I really like to die. She told me. And uh, why? The photos is very really small. It's not so much. <laughs> sorry. I know. I'm uh, so sorry because of the screen resolution. Yeah. Yes, yes, I will say. Uh, I mean, in my website, there was so much photos that it's not here. Yeah, but, viewers, uh, I told with her. Uh, viewers, uh, you can always visit Fatima Babudi's uh, website, which is uh, fatimababudi.visual.co. I will be sharing her website after this uh, live show, and you can always go through her work and uh, uh, see the photos uh, by your own. Thank you. Yeah, please, Fatima, proceed. Yes, uh, and she told me, Fatima, I'm really tired because I was waiting for my last son, about 32 years. I really like to die. But before I, my, de my, de my death, I really like to find a little part of the body of my son. After that, I really like to die because I'm really tired. And one day, I was really, uh, I, um, I personally, I was very sad. Uh, and I mean, because... We we are Muslim and we believe uh, to God much. And with God, uh, I told him, uh, "Can you help this mother because she's very tired?" And I don't know how could I help her. She was very like a, she was like a mother to me. And for the first time in my life, I had a dream about her son. I mean, her son that he he he. I mean, he he were uh, last about 32 years, and in my dream, I had uh, uh, one person called me and told me that her her son body were found, and in my room, uh, in my dream, uh, I went to her home and I found uh, I, I was looking for her, I but I couldn't find him, and uh, when I woke up, I called her, I told him, uh, 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 I had a dream about your son. I think your son is going to be to be fine. And she told me, Fatima, do you believe that he's coming back? I told him, Inshallah. I mean, the, the God is going to help you. And I can't believe that after three months, I had one person called me, told me, Fatima, uh, her son was were found with DNA test. And wow. I was shocked. 
wow, I couldn't believe that, that her somebody sent me a message to me and I, I gave uh, her mother this message. And that I never forget that that day I went to her home and uh, I, uh, we loved each other. I mean, I'm not just a photographer at the moment. I was just a person. And uh, we hugged uh, each other and I told her, did you see that your son come back? And she cried so hard. At that moment, I took uh, her sh her shot. Uh, she's call she's talking with other people. Many people ca called at the moment and uh, said uh, congrats to her that her her but her, your, her I mean your son body were found and come back and something like that. It was a very important shot to me. What uh, for uh, ice shot? This shot, I really like this shot. This woman this that she slept under the tree. Uh, another shot. This one. The yeah. woman she slept under the tree. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, when uh, this woman, yes, I went to her home. She told me uh, that the tree is uh, the only thing that she had from her son, uh, because her son before going to the war he made a tree in in the yard, and uh, when he went uh, and every day mother she's going to the she is sleeping under the tree or she always crying or it everything is happening under the this tree because this is the only memory that uh, she have from her somebody and i really cried with this moment and uh, i couldn't believe that this mother i mean she's like a child i mean at the, at, the, uh, at this moment and she told me i really like to die i but i really like to find for a moment my somebody and uh, I really like cried. I, I really, I really cried with this moment because I couldn't believe that in Iran, many people uh, thought that uh, I mean the families of uh, Iranian matris, they are very rich people, but in the reality, they are not very rich. They lost uh, their life, do you know? Uh, when I worked on this project, I found that the biggest victims of the war, they are not those who were killed. Uh, I mean, uh, those people who are still alive, but they uh, they always are living with many pain and suffer. And uh, I believe that uh, I and I really like to continue this long term projects. Amazing. Um, some really heart wrenching stories, uh, Fatima, because I think that uh, we always see the war from an outside world and uh, the mainstream media gives a very um, static and a very very straight glimpse of the war but the there are like so detailed stories yes. so, some 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 very yeah. you know thousands and thousands of personal stories behind any war and uh especially this iran europe war um uh we you know is the 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 the, the people we who uh, grew up in in eighties, uh, uh, you know, or nineties. We have seen this war, uh, war in a in a very, from a very different angle of view. So, but from your perspective, it's so original and it's so so intimate. I must have to say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can 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 we proceed to the to the next story? Which one do you wanna uh, do? Do you want me to uh, show the uh, let me free from myself or which one? Oh my gosh, yeah. so, All right. So, I made this project when I felt that I can't press in Iran. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah. So, how did you how did you uh, start this project, and what is this about? So, so uh, this project is about the the ceremony in Iran. It's very old ceremony and traditional ceremony. It's about the Imam Hussein. Uh, I I don't know that. Uh, yep in Bangladesh know about the Muhammad Hussein or no. Yeah, uh, he is the grand of uh, Payam Muhammad and he's very, very important for Shia people. And uh, it's near for 600 years, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, I looked everywhere to know. 
این لورستان ای می خورم با در از ویری اولد و تردیشنال سرمونی فور وان دی بی فور آشورا ای می ایس اباوت تاسو آده دوز پیپل هو نید تو هلپ آف امام حسین بیکاز وی بیلیف دید حسین هلپ تو ادر پیپل این دوز پیپل هو نید I mean, they have many sick people in their homes or they have many problems. They believe that Imam Hussein always helped them. I mean, like, or even some people believe to pay Muhammad Sallallahu or uh, even Imam Riza or something. And uh, those people who have many problems, they, uh, I mean, especially women, this day is just for women. They will, uh, like, a huge job, uh, they bring their, their face and uh, they don't think, they don't speak with each other. Uh, they are going to 40 house, uh, houses uh, and they turn off, turn on uh, something, I, I forget. That's sorry, the, uh, the name. After that, uh, when uh, they meet going back to home and they uh, they uh, take off their hijab and after that they can speak with each other. Uh, they believe that Imam Hussein always helping to their uh, to their lives, and I really like this uh, traditional uh, ceremony. It's very old and it's very strange. But when I started this project, I always had uh, this feeling that I'm a wo woman and uh, I can't rest in many times. I had, uh, when uh, that's why when I made these projects and I made all the photos, I mean, with my, with my feelings. And uh, yes, it's, I mean, uh, I don't know other people, uh, but it's no, very uh, personal. Fatima, we are, we are getting a lot uh, of uh, comments and compliments uh, for your photographs. And I think people, some people have uh, a few questions as well, but I'm, I'm unable to read the comments while showing, uh, while sharing my screen. So I will be reading the comments at the end of the show, okay? Um, so I wanted to ask you, like, um, uh, we, we see a very uh, different uh, view of Iran uh, from outside, uh, from the outside world. So, uh, being a woman photographer, how do you find it uh, uh, to work uh, in in your own country? In in sorry, I couldn't hear you. In my country. Like yeah, like, uh, how is it? So, so uh, what's your experience uh, as a woman photographer working in the different types of uh, issues yes. in, in depth? Yes. When I started photography, I mean, news photography in Iran, I think there was not so much woman photographer in Iran. Uh, I never forget that. Uh, uh, we had many limitations, I mean, or still we have, uh, because my it is men and uh, I mean uh, we have many limitations Iranian news agency or documentary agency I mean uh, they don't allow women to uh, show their powers in photography so uh, I think I'm <laughs> I, I I'm personally I'm very I mean I'm I think uh, I really like uh, to find my freedom I always tried my best to show power in photography but uh, uh, we had many, many problems uh, for my first, for my male society, another is uh, for, for another problem was basic sanctions because uh, we had many problems, with economic problems, and uh, there is many, many problems. I it's not very easy for women to support herself. And in the recent years that I, I saw that many women, uh, women photographers, they, they can't continue their, their photo, I mean, uh, photography because of those problems. So I always fought and I always changed my news agencies because I wanted to experience many great things. But after many years, I think 12 years or 13 years that I'm working, I found that Fatima, how much you're trying so hard. I mean, with Iranian news agency, you can, they never give you great chance for, I mean, uh, to be like a professional photographer, like a man, men photographers. So 
I, it's very hard, you know. But uh, I always just believe something that I always made my personal projects. I mean, uh, I try to show a little part of the real, reality of Iran that I think maybe it's going to change. I mean, uh, other people I know, many people in the world, they really like to know about Iran. But other news agents in the world, they so many times they they, they don't show about the reality of Iran. Uh, so I decided slowly to make uh, projects that I think they are right. Uh, I mean, uh, I decided to be independent and uh, support just myself and continue my dream. Uh, but it's very, very hard. I think uh, it's not easy. I mean, in Europe, it's very easy and it's very better for one photographer. But in Iran, in Middle East, everything is different. And so, yeah. uh, we, yes, I should. I understand. Fight, I completely fighting. understand that. It's really uh, hard to uh, get it uh, when we are in a in a very privileged uh, place, and we are very privileged, and we uh, in a place where full of opportunities. So it's really hard to understand the other side uh, of the world. And uh, I, I get you, of course, and. I do want to talk about a little bit more about your uh, other projects. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ima, Ima Taz. Thank you very much. Yes. No, of course. Uh, thank you too. And uh, I, I, I really wanted to show um, uh, your project, one of your project, which is uh, uh, which is called uh, Life After Shock. Which uh, and I know that that was like uh, after uh, an earthquake. Um, uh, but before yeah, I sure. go to this, before I go to this, I uh, let me let me um, show the project. Martyr uh, is alive. So uh, okay. going back to the, to the Martyrs project. So sharing my screen again, and we will be, yep, yeah. like so. Um, so, is this project uh, uh, related to the to the other projects? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, when I started uh, Mothers of the Project, uh, I think I at the at the time I told to their families I think the difference between the mothers that they found their son bodies or the mother that they never found. I wanted to know what is the difference between uh, is between, I mean, the victims of the war. I mean, uh, so I started the mother's project and I, I went to the ceremony, I mean, uh, to Behesh Zah, is the place for Iran, so Iranian police that they is at there. I mean, it's more than 30, 33,000 Iranian soldiers that their bodies is in Behesh Zahra. So, uh, I, I went at this place and I found this of the, I mean, mother or families of soldiers that they always going to be Zahra and they always uh, living. And it was very really strange and like a shock to me. I found out how much is that uh, is uh, between the difference. I mean, the, the mothers that they never found and the mothers, they have a place, I mean, grave place. Some, and uh, those people, I mean, uh, these soldiers, mothers or family, they have hope. They all, they have a place to go for crying. They know the, uh, where is their son bodies. Uh, and uh, it was very interesting to me that I, I, I found that uh, uh, people are always living. They believe that the mother is alive and he, I mean, mother is not, he, he uh, I mean, he did not, Sorry, he didn't. Uh, this I think uh, that uh, every day always going to be Sahra and living, or some uh, or even young people always going at there, and they have a birthday, or they have I mean uh, like a marriage married together at the uh, base Sahra. I think uh, I think if you come to Iran and go to this place, you can see this place is very different with other places. And uh, I really love this place, and I went to this uh, to base out of for three years, and I worked on this project. So uh, it was very interesting. Uh, there is living, I mean, there is hope, 
people are very happy at this at this place but in mother's projects everything is uh, stopped the mothers they don't feel the time is going the mothers is stopped everything is stopped everything is black and uh, so it's very interesting yeah very interesting in uh, in your picture especially yeah, particularly in this project, I see that your uh, your style is very much intimate as well as uh, in detail. So your uh, uh, your attention to to the to the details are so uh, perfect, um, and these small little emotions it made the whole story so powerful. So uh, Fatima, uh, I wanted to. Uh, I feel like uh, there are like uh, so, so many, uh, you know, so many things happening all, all the time in Iran. So when we see the, the, the main pictures from the mainstream media and then uh, you are showing your own personal stories to the world, uh, what type of um, what type of response do you usually get from the from the other parts of the world? How how do how do the people I react to your photo? Can you hear me? Ah, oh, uh, how is the reaction of people in the world? You mean? Yeah, like yes, you I have, think you sometimes have your, your voice is a little half problem. Yeah, please proceed. I I can't hear your voice now. <laughs> uh, you mean about the reaction of people? Yes. Yes. Sorry, can't hear you now. Okay, uh, do you know one thing is, uh, I mean, for all of my projects, I don't receive any money. I mean, uh, because I never, um, bec I don't know, because I think that uh, the media or I mean the festivals or they always make uh, making uh, choosing the projects that reality, not uh, the story that uh, are reality. But one thing is very important to me. Uh, I think the festivals or awards are not very important to me, but the reaction of people is very important. Uh, I had many ex exhibition in, I mean, Myanmar or different countries, and I, I always saw many people that cried or they were surprised when they saw my project, and they told me we really like to know you and we always show us a different projects, different stories. Uh, I, you need, I mean, uh, I saw many great reactions from people around the world, and that's why they always make my heart to be very warm, to continue, I mean, to one thing that I really believe that. And many times it's very hard because uh, I have no support in Iran or even out of Iran, and I always should find a, a small way for my projects that I will continue that. But uh, the reaction of people is the only thing that I really like uh, in my photography. And I'm trying to continue this pace. Definitely. Especially so for mother's projects, that uh, one thing was very interesting because I received many, when uh, the project could uh, receive, uh, I received many messages from the Argentina, I think, Afghanistan or I mean uh, many, many countries, like I think I forget that, uh, ah, Kashmir, Hen, India, or different countries that they told me, Fatima, we have many mothers like your Iranian mothers. They told me we there are many mothers in our countries that they lost uh, their sons during the war or something like that, and they are still waiting, uh, or even in Iraq or, different countries and uh, when I made this project I mean I think uh, the project could uh, make a great connection with people and the main people I mean in different countries like I mean we say America or, or Israel we always say that how much they cried and they could uh, understand the project and I was happy after that I found that uh, 
how, how much uh, our photographs are very uh, strong and uh, they are very impressive and could make a, a great connection with other people. I think the only thing that I really like in photography is just that to make a story that people could understand and uh, I, I like that. I really like to continue. Yeah. Uh, Fatima, yes. in this point, I, I, I want to read a few of our uh, comments which I have been receiving through Facebook. Yes, um, and uh, we are getting a lot of uh, responses from different platforms as this uh, podcast is being um, transmitted from, uh, from both uh, Facebook and the YouTube channel. And uh, Imtaz Ahmed Mo, uh, she wrote, Fatima, uh, your stories are heart touching and inspiring. Uh, Shakat Hussain, uh, he made a few comments which uh, he really applauded your uh, dedication. He, he said, amazing. Um, and uh, Craig uh, Screener, uh, he wrote, uh, thank you. Uh, for who you are and for sharing your stories. Dear Fatima, peace. Uh, Mr. Alex uh, Nishe, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, um, but he, Mr. Alex uh, wrote, Fatima, your images show a heart-wrenching side of Iran that I know a little about uh, because I lived in, there in uh, 2007 to 2009. Uh, but as a foreigner, one never gets close to this. How do you get access? Do you want to answer this question? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, sorry, I cannot rest a little part of <laughs> I mean, about access. Uh, how do you get access? I can address that. Like, how do you manage to go inside people's house? Like, you know, means how do you manage to um, select your subjects and you know um, and oh, yes, convince, yes, yes. convince people? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, means, uh, convince yes. people. You know, to take really their. Alex, yes, yes. I'm really sorry, Alex, because my language is not very well. I'm really sorry, <laughs> and sometimes I can't understand some some words. Again, you don't have to be. Um, uh, excellent, of course. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I think, uh, yes, I think I always following my heart, and I always choose the projects that I think they are important and they are very impressive in the people of lives. I mean, the people, the lives of people. I think uh, the only thing, uh, I mean, uh, the only reason is about that. I mean. Uh, I mean, like uh, air school project, because I think that uh, the lives of millions of people are always, uh, uh, I mean, destroyed or in the future is going to be destroyed uh, because of that. Or even, I mean, the effects of the war, I think that the lives of million people, I mean, in the Middle East is impressive, impressed by the, by the war. Or like the execution, I mean, I, I wrote that. Uh, it was a very, I mean, it was a very dark part of Iran in, in 2011 or in 2012. I always made uh, the projects that I always felt uh, that they are very important that uh, and uh, they should be seen. And I always follow my heart. Yes. Uh, yes. I and chose the projects because of them. Do you want to talk a little bit about your execution project? And uh, if you do don't mind understand? helping, yes. how, how how do I find it in your uh, in your uh, well, website? I think uh, the execution. Yes, I think uh, execution projects is have a password. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of my master told me you should. Yes, I bet I sent you the photos if you can show. It. Yes, uh, that's on my. That's on. Uh, Viewers, please uh, allow us some time so that I can show you yes. uh, the the project. Is this 
Oh, hold on a second. So, so I uh, can speak about the yes. execution projects, why I made it, and after that, uh, the others can go and look at the project. Uh, sure, of course. Uh, I, I, I got it. I got it. Hold on a second. I got it. And uh, let me, I know yeah. that this is, the picture shows very small though, but still we can, we can, Yes. Can have a look. Uh, when I yes. was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Please proceed. Ah uh, yes. So uh, about the execution project. Ah uh, yes. Okay. That's great. <laughs> so uh, I made these projects. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I did this project uh, because when I was 17, I was very young and uh, I read a book from Dostoevsky, a Russian writer, he's very famous, and he, he spoke about the violence uh, in watching the, the execution. It was like, uh, I mean, at, at that time i was very young and i i had i had no information about society or uh, about the nature of people i mean about the human being and i thought that uh, maybe people all people uh, are changed i mean uh, people are changing and maybe uh, the people uh, they are not like before and i start i mean when i Work. I mean, I started professional photography in the Iranian news agency. I mean, uh, it was about 2011 and 2012. There was many execution in public in Iran. There was so much, but today it's changed and there is no so much. And uh, at that time, I decided to make a project about that. I was so curious to to know that uh, I wanted to know uh, how much people change and uh, or there is a miracle or no. Uh, so uh, before that, I had no information. I did not, I didn't know uh, wh why I'm making this, this project. Uh, I uh, worked on uh, execution, I, on five execution on four, four cities of Iran. And every time I went to take photos, I saw I mean, uh, I saw different uh, moments, and I after that I heard many news that uh, because the execution in public in Iran was free and everybody could watch that children or the women or different place, uh, other people, and it was like a shock to me. After that, I asked the question why watching the death of people is free, why people uh, have no right to be happy, but they can watch the death of people. So uh, after that, uh, I was looking for, for the miracles. I really to God, and always I I really like to see that. Can can you please uh, uh, can you please uh, back before a shot before that? No no no, please back. A person, yes, this shot. And I don't know, uh, when I went to take photos of this person, I think. Uh, is back yes that person that uh, his eyes is closed and he uh, when the eyes uh, was open and when i was so curious take him and he looked at me and he asked me a question he told me why are you here and why what uh, what do you want to watch do you know at, at that moment i was shocked didn't know. Yep. I had many answers, but I couldn't answer him because uh, at the moment, sometimes uh, in our photography, we uh, I don't know that other photographers are like that, but uh, that person said, this is not another shot. <sighs> Sorry, can you go to back? Back shot? Uh, one shot before that. Yes, and he talked to me, and he wanted uh, no, no, another shot. <laughs> and he talked to me, why are you here? And he told me, and that's why at the, the moment uh, I didn't know how, 
what should I say to him? And uh, it was like a shock to me. And he told me, uh, please uh, take care of your family or your sister or your brother. And uh, after that, he wanted to say his last words, but I uh, guess this person. But uh, the police or other people didn't allow him uh, to speak. But uh, he looked at me. I think uh, I think I was the last hope for him. He told me, can you go and uh, uh, to find my mother? And, uh, you know, it was a very strange moment. I didn't know what should I say. And when he told me, can you, he asked me, can you go and see my mother? And I didn't know uh, his words were not finished after that uh, the execution finished. Uh, at, the, at the moment, I just took shots. But I cried, and after that, I I went back and looked at the other people. At the moment, I what should I do? And I was surprised, and I think I was like that person. I was sh uh, shocked. I didn't know, I didn't know why people uh, they come and they are trying so hard to watch uh, the death of those people, and uh, I mean. Uh, uh, this execution project changed me, and I found that the violence of people is never going to change. This is important, and how much uh, the people, I mean human, is going to be modern, but our nature is never going to change. Uh, I mean people or human, they always like to see the violence. And uh, after that, I think for many years, I never, never forget those people who they took the, uh, their photos. So uh, when I took the person that he t uh, talked to me, I mean, uh, I mean, he was a, a kill, uh, killer. He, uh, he and his friend they built a family. But uh, at the moment, I found I thought that um, every person can make uh, a mistake. Uh, all of us may, can make a mistake, and those people, when I saw them. They, many of them uh, laughed and they were happy, but when I talked to them, they told me uh, it was right, he should die. I told them, I, maybe I can make a mistake when, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I think uh, that's why I made this approach. I wanted to show the reaction people, but uh, I mean, uh, how much we think that we are right, you know, the people think uh, those people who were died, I mean, uh, they are black, they are just black and they should die but those people they were white i mean they were ne they always they were never like in their homes uh, in their uh, lives you know uh this project is always like a question to me and uh, i never sent this project for the festivals or for publishing i think this is just for my heart and and uh, many times i always thinking to those people and taking photos of people who are dying is the hardest thing for, I mean, for every photographer, I think, yes. And yes. My okay, last project is, I mean, my last, yes, my last shot, last shot, sorry, can you go, can you go to the start of the project? Sure, sure. Sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, my last uh, execution that I took photos, it was about two young people. Uh, boys, yes, sorry, next shot. Next shot. Yes. Yes, can you please stop? Uh, no, no, the second, before, before that. Uh, my last shot was uh, about two young boys. This, okay. Do you know they told me something that was very important and I really like to share with other photographers that. Uh, special to young photographers that they want to start their photography. Uh, uh, one of them told me, uh, we are going to be killed just because of the media, media. And he was right because they stole just some money in the street. But I mean, uh, with something, it, many people, they were, they had many fear because of that, because their movies come and many people saw their movies, and uh, uh, because of the movie, they died. And the media made them be very big. But uh, I, I mean, they could be alive today, but they told me that the media killed us. 
it was very strange and uh, because uh, after that I found that the media have this power to make, uh, I mean, uh, to give life to people or can uh, take the life of people, you know. And uh, this is the power that we should always be, we, we should always be very careful uh, with our camera. Uh, when we want to take photos of people, we should think uh, how much, I mean, uh, about the, uh, the effects uh, of our photos is very important. Uh, it was uh, my last shot I took uh, of those people, I mean, about the execution, and I found that uh, how much Iranian media made many mis mistakes uh, because of media, they were killed. I never forget that. And after that, I didn't continue this project. Fatima, these projects uh, triggers a lot of questions, a lot of... Um, a a lot of questions and a lot of queries from, from in people's mind of course and I, I as you told by yourself that you it, it triggered a lot of questions to yourself too so especially in this uh, time when you know there's a lot of debate around the world about the about the uh, live executions and the role of the media so yeah. your project is like I, I think it's at the same time it's timeless and um, it gives a different perspective to to our to to our uh, very traditional um, mindset. Uh, I wanted to ask you, like in these photographs, I I, I see uh, that that I see a lot of male, a lot of men around uh, the the happenings are, are uh, a lot a lot of involvement of men. Uh, being a woman. Um, how did you uh, how did you feel yourself? Uh, I know that you already talked about your feelings, but security wise, how was it to, to photograph the, these event, these kind of events? Like I know that. Um, know. Uh, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, when, uh, uh, I always had the dream to be great photographer, so I always forced myself to control my my feelings and make my photos, my, 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 I mean, my works. Uh, I always, when I want to take photos of at this moment, uh, I think I was very strong. I think I'm not very sensitive at the moment when I'm taking photos. But after that, after that, uh, when I'm looking at my photos now or um, at that time, I mean, after photography, so I was think it, uh, it's made me or like, very sad. Was there any no. challenge? Did anybody try to stop you, or uh, how was the reaction? Uh, my uh, father, you? my father, oh, he, my father, yes, my father, he was psychologist. He, he always told me, Fatima, please don't go because I know after that this project you're going to be very sad. But he told, I told him this is part of his story. I should go take photos. I mean, <laughs> I was very, uh, it was very important to me because I know this is part of the Iran's history. And uh, I wanted to make this story and I wanted to find my answer. But I didn't know that. Uh, I think uh, sometimes I'm very sad why I did make this project. But sometimes I'm not that because I'm uh, this project made me to be a deeper person, you know. Uh, photography, I mean, for me, is like uh, it's like a way. I mean, like a pace of life, you know. With photography, you can see about the nature of people, what is their reaction, why they are. I mean, I I can find many answers. I mean, I can find uh, many challenge uh, for myself, you know. It made me to very deeper I think uh, uh, it made me to be very sadder but uh, uh, mm, I could control it it was not very hard to me because I made another project I mean the earthquake this one or maybe in my past but well, I had many hardships and I was not very sensitive person I think I was a a little person, and I always saw my my men my men friends. I mean, the, my men photographer friends, uh, they were very sensitive. But I I was not like that. I was very curious to know what is happening, and I wanted to take the photos of all of them, because I knew that uh, this event is very important, and I should take uh, these photos. But I didn't know how much is very important. 
but after many years i found about that definitely this is uh, this is an incredibly uh, important project to document of course and the world is seeing um, uh, these these stories through your eyes and um, uh, and I, like other uh, people who are commenting on our uh, Facebook uh, pages, they're like, you know, this, uh, I, I really want to say with them that uh, thank you very much for covering these things. So uh, Vivian uh, uh, Valdez from the Philippines, uh, she wrote, I can relate to what you say that women photojournalists find difficulties in this line of work. They always say that it's a men's world, which I wish would change. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you no, know, one thing, uh, uh, after many years, I found something that uh, I when I have workshops for Iranian women, I mean, a special woman, uh, I always believe that women have a very strange power in their photographies, but uh, they don't know about that. I, and I mean, it's about their feelings, and this is the power of women that they can use that in their photographers. Okay, uh, men photographers are very great. They always make very great, I mean, great shots. I always saw that. But women have very stronger things in their in, the, in themselves. I think uh, if they know about this power, in, about the feelings, the inside of. Uh, they, I mean, in heart, maybe I think they can make very stronger stories than men photographers. I think uh, you should find yourself. I mean, Vivian, you know, uh, if you like to be like a men photographer, okay, to, you're going to be very similar. But if you like to be like yourself, you can make a different and very strong projects than men photographers. I think, I think women should uh, find their powers. I, I mean. Uh, if women could believe themselves, they can uh, make very different projects. Absolutely. I I say, but after many years, I found, I found this. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we, we need more women photographers from all around the world, women yes, artists. Yes, yes, yes. And we wanna yes, see, we women. wanna talk about if the, about the, about the journeys of the, of the women photographers. In, in yeah. more uh, more uh, biggest um, space, of course. Uh, yeah. Fatima, that uh, I know that uh, uh, a lot of my students and uh, a lot of photographers who uh, who really uh, like your work and who really follows you, you know, is watching this this show from uh, from different different parts of the world. Um, uh, don't take me, uh, you know, don't take me wrong, but I want to, if I want to ask you, like, what type of equipments or photography gear do you use? Is there any particular photography gear that helps you to go uh, uh, to pursue your work in more intimate way? I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, is there any particular photography gear like is there any particular photograph uh, 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 camera or anything or any any particular lens you always use uh, to maintain your style or signature yes <laughs> sorry i couldn't understand <laughs> sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. i'm sorry maybe i'm i'm being what difficult my... my english is not so good as well yeah. so uh, um, okay so <laughs> What type of photography equipments or camera do you use? What type of photography? Uh, camera, um, camera, or what type oh, of camera? I mean, no, for me, I, no, I, I, I mean, uh, what is important for me? I mean, in my photography, yeah. uh, I mean, photography is not. I mean, the camera is not very important. Important. I yeah. mean, in before, in before photograph. I mean. Uh, I'm not a rich person. <laughs> I'm I were never a rich person, and uh, but uh, I think today I found that the camera is not really important. I I have a very small camera that I received awards from the WordPress Masterclass WordPress seven years ago, and I still could not buy another camera. But uh, I think today. The photography is not important. When I'm going to a street, I always take photos with my mind. 
I always think to people, I always um, I thinking, I mean, the idea, I mean, what am I saying with my photographs is more important than the camera. I, I see that many people, I mean, they have many great cameras, but they can't say, I, they can't take photos that uh, to be very impressive and help me to to understand what is he saying uh, i i don't know you can't believe that but i know i don't look at many many i i mean in news or documentary agency because uh when i see many photos i can see what is he Ma most of the photos in the world are very similar to each other uh, yeah. i i think there is no difference with many photos i i think you can understand what i'm saying but I always looking for for a photographer who is different. I mean, uh, for me, I mean the camera is not really important. I mean, you just, what is you just perfectly she explained it, uh, and I, I I got the right answer from you because in this in this world when you know this, um, photography is all about like big cameras and uh, um, it, you know yes. the fancy gadgets and everything, so. Uh, you yeah. perfectly explained like uh, how uh, how important is the story is, and no matter what camera do we use, or no matter what I whatever think, uh, we have, yeah, the story is the uh, the main thing. If you if the story very uh, important, you know, yeah. everything. I mean, photography is just about the story, not not about the photograph. I mean, the camera. Yeah. I mean, I mean, camera is just five or ten percent, and ninety yep. percent is about the storytelling and what am I saying and what is the difference between my vision, I think, and with others. Do you know most yeah. of? And do you know? Uh, I always work in difficult moments because I always wanted to find many things. I mean, different meaning. It was very important to me. I wanted to understand people. And when I went to the earthquake, I mean, for three or many times, I had no place for sleeping. I had no food for eating. I mean, uh, most of my clothes are very, very, very I think very, they were not good. I always lived with many difficulties because I wanted to find, I lived with other people. I lived with like, I mean, poor people. I wanted to understand what is happening to their lives and my pace and all of my pain, all of them helped me to find my, my I mean, my, my vision, I think, photography. So I don't know the vision is the right word. Uh, I think uh, it's very good. Before I mean, I really like to say to young people that uh, please forget your camera and go and live with poor people. Go to the lives of the people to see what is happening to their lives. And uh, if you have problems, with, I mean, if you're rich people, please uh, forget all things you have. Go and live with other people. Go to Middle East. Go, I mean, go uh, understand what is happening. And uh, sometimes it's very good if you can uh, find a little pain. Pain is very good things. Make us to be very, very deep person. And I think strong. You should, um, should, yes, I think make us to be very strong, you know. And uh, I think you should make your personal, your personality first. After that, take your photos. It's very important. Many people take uh, think uh, that they should have if they have a very good camera. Okay, I can make a uh, great projects now. But the photography is not about taking photos. Photography yeah, is like building your personality first, and then then determine your photographic signature what a tremendous what what a what a, what a significant suggestions you have given to the to the young generations and uh, absolutely you are great young inspirations around the world and um people are you know means people are not only amazed by your photographs but you show the the your world to the to the to to the other part of the world to the other people in the, uh, of the other uh, part of the world in a very different and unique way and i hope that you will continue to doing this and uh, you know you will continue to send your message to uh, uh, to to the to the young generations of course so uh, we are almost in, uh, in at the end of our uh, conversation um, 
uh, a lot of people thanked you uh, as uh, as I am also thanking you very much. Uh, Mihoko Wada, a Japanese photographer uh, based in Washington, D.C., she sent uh, gratitude to, towards you and uh, a lot of other uh, people too. Uh, Mr. Alex uh, Georgina Nishe, um, uh, he wrote, a thank you for this interview, Andrew and Fatima. Thank you. You are most welcome, sir. And uh, Fatima, we are at the end of our conversation. I think I uh, can I make a request? Uh, if you please, please uh, upload your uh, execution project to your um, website. People will be people will be very uh, okay. benefited from from. I think a lot of people are interested to see your this project, so that would be great. Okay. And uh, I know that you are uh, you are also involved with uh, like some. Uh, 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 incredible platforms like women photographs, uh, Visura, and uh, I really uh, thank them uh, to showcasing your work uh, uh, to the other people. And uh, by that, a lot of people uh, could uh, see your work. Um, Vivian say thank to both of you, Shubhra uh, Kantidash. So one last question. To Fatima, uh, is there any specific? I know that you already talked about the photography uh, camera and stuff to the young people, but is there any other specific suggestions you want to give to the young generation? Um, photography is very hard way, and many times you have no money for continue your project. <laughs> many times uh, you're going to lose your belief. And many times you don't know how could I continue my work. And I think I I'm in middle of this way too. But uh, always believe yourself and believe in your photography and this is not important your project could receive awards or festival or no this is not really important just take photos with your heart to those i mean uh, i mean the, make the projects that you believe uh, uh, that they are right and could uh, make the heart of people to be uh, near to each other to make those uh, stories and I, I think uh, i have many problems with i mean politician because uh, politician in the world they always start and start thinking many wars and they always make many enemies with uh, people but i think we need uh, peace please try to make uh, peace for our our children in the world. I think uh, the world is very small and we should be uh, to make this peace is not very hard. I think this is not very impossible. And uh, we should always uh, believe ourselves. And I think this is my last words. Yes, believe yourself. Yes. Absolutely, believe yourself. Thank you so very much, uh, Fatima Bibudi. Uh, your pictures yep. will make significant um, contribution to the to the world peace, and mm -hmm. we are so certain about it. And thank you so so very much for sharing your stories, and um, uh, and your pictures. And I'm uh, really sorry. If, sure. Yes, I'm really sorry if my language was very bad. I'm really sorry because in Iran we have no connection so much with English people. I mean. Sorry, my language. Fatima, you don't have to say sorry. Uh, we are very, very grateful to you. We are really thankful to you for connecting uh, <laughs> to, to the world from, from a very remote uh, place and showing and sharing your views and photos uh, to our yeah. to our uh, audience. Uh, we're really thank, thankful to you. And we wish you all the best. And we look forward to more incredible stories from you. Yes, thank you very much. You are most welcome. Viewers, uh, one more time, if you want to uh, see Fatima Bibudi's work in details, you can always visit www.fatimabibudi.visura.co and uh, you can always uh, 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 subscribe to uh, my channel, which is uh, facebook.com uh, uh, slash Andrew Biraj and uh, youtube.com slash uh, Andrew Biraj so that you can see 
uh, incredible uh, interviews like Fatima Bebudis and other photographers and on my channel. Uh, I really thank to everyone who are who have been watching okay. with us, who have been with us. And thank you, Fatima. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. <laughs> thank you very much. You're most Bye. welcome. Thank you, viewers. And I promise you to come back very soon with another uh, amazing photographers from a different part of the world. Until then, stay tuned and um, be healthy. Thank you.